Welcome to my in-depth Stratholm farming guide for protection paladins in War of the Lich King. I will show you what gear to choose, which talents to pick, which glyphs are the best, which addons to use, macros that help you, a rundown of every single pull and how to execute it, undead side pulls for beginners and advanced farmers, and of course the most important, how much gold per hour and how to improve it. So let us don't waste any more time and start with the guide. Have fun! First of all, let's talk about some changes Blizzard did from TBC to War of the Lich King and how they affect us. The biggest one is the change to killing grey mobs in dungeons. After 60 seconds combat time, a mob will start to stun you. This stun goes through bubble, free action potion, freedom and other abilities, which would normally help against stuns. This means we have to build all pulls around this 60 second timer. In the Burning Crusade it was quite common to pull the whole instance in one big pull. Sadly, this doesn't work anymore. Second, there are no reset spots anymore. If you jump up a wall or something, the mob will straight up teleport to you. Or you will be teleported to them. Third, we can't boost anymore. Blizzard changed the XP gains when a high level player is inside the dungeon. That out of the way, let's talk about the gearing. This farm is super easy and you don't need a lot of gear. Just start with your gear you collected while leveling up your character. But to maximize the efficiency of this farm, we want to maximize our consecration damage. To achieve this, stack strength on your items and enchant your shoulders or head with the attack power enchants. Survivability is not a big issue here, since the mobs are so low level, so I recommend to use two DPS trinkets, for example, Dark Moon Card Greatness and Dark Moon Card Crusade are perfect to boost your damage. I, for example, still use the tier 6 4 piece, which increased my damage by 10% or the Ring of Tenarius to boost my spell power by 132. This ring only helps you with big pulls. And this is exactly what we are doing here. More damage means faster kills and that translates into more gold per hour. I will put the link of my gear in the description of the video. These are the talents I use. This farm is totally possible with your normal tank spec. I just added Guardian's Favor to increase the duration of freedom, which helps on the undead side. Reckoning is always insane for farming. It increases our self heal from Judgment of the Light a lot. Pursue of Justice is a must have challenge, which increases your run speed by 15%. It helps us to stay in that 60 second window, which I talked about earlier. Since 90% of all mobs inside Stratholm are undead, we have quite a few glyphs that boost up our damage output. For major glyphs, I use Glyph of Holy Raw, Glyph of Hammer of the Righteous, and Glyph of Consecration. But the Consecration glyph is just out of laziness, it doesn't increase our damage output. For minor glyphs, I go with Glyph of Sense Undead, and the other two are completely optional. We don't need any, but I would recommend them. Scroll of Strength, Elixir of Mighty Strength or some Strength or Attack Power buff food is super cheap and speeds up the pulls. If you are an engineer, use Serenite Bones. They are cheap and speed things up quite a bit. It improves your gold per hour, but like I said, it's not needed. Nova Instance Tracker helps you to monitor how long your run took and how long your potential lockout will be. A lot of people still think that they can do 5 instances per hour, but this is not true. Only in the first hour of farming, 5 instances are possible. The reason for that is that the first lockout starts after the first run. So for example, you start your first run at 12 pm and finish the run at 12.12 12 pm. The lockout starts at 12.12. 12. If you do 4 more runs, which all take 12 minutes, you are done at 13 pm. And now you can't enter a new dungeon till 13.12 pm. When you enter again at 13.12 pm and all next runs take again 12 minutes, 
you only did four more runs until 14 o'clock. So you did nine runs in two hours and this continues every hour after the first. So our goal is to do 15 minute runs and maximize the mobs killed in that time to not hit a lockout. Speedy auto loot. You will loot thousands of mobs and this add-on speeds it up. This will literally save you a few minutes every hour. In combination with this, I highly recommend to put the interact with target keybind on your mouse wheel to loot even faster. Kiwi farm. This shows you the gold per hour. Not a must have, but nice to monitor it. It can motivate you to farm more when you see what you can farm in an hour. I use some start attack and targeting macros. I post them in the video description that you can easily copy and paste them if you want. Now I show you every single pull. Feel free to skip to the pull you want to see if you already know some pulls. The instance is located in the Eastern Plaguelands. We have two entrances. The service gate and the main gate. To enter the service gate we need the key to the city and to get the key we have to do one run from the main gate, go inside, kill a boss and he will drop the key. We only do this one time and after that we always um, enter the instance in, at the service gate. Let me show you how to get the key real quick. Before we start the first pull, let me give you a few tips that will help you with the Stratum farm. Make sure you have Blessing of Sanctuary, Blessing of Might, Cleanse and Hand of Freedom on a good to read hotkey. We switch between Blessing of Might and Blessing of Sanctuary when we pull mobs and kill mobs. For pulling we use Sanctuary, for killing Might. While we run and pull the mobs, we spam cleanse. The mobs use frostbolt on you and they, this slows you. Spam cleanse while running and this prevents the slow. And also the mobs use hamstring. If you get a hamstring, use your hand of freedom quickly and you can run freely. Now let me show you the first pull. Just enter through the gate, auto take the first pack here, apply sacred shield and pull the far pack with your hand of reckoning. If you are an engineer you can use your rocket or nitro boots here, if not just run down here. Look to the right side sometimes here is a rare mob. Uh, if here is a rare mob just pull it with Avengers Shield. Otherwise, target the right mobs, use your Hand of Reckoning again, auto attack this mobs. If the rare mob is here, we pull it here with uh, Avengers Shield, otherwise Hand of Reckoning this mob. Here in the corner is our kill spot. When we reach this kill spot, use Aven uh, Avenging Wrath, Blessing of Might and Make sure to always have Consecration on the ground and use your Holy War on CD. Now the second pull. We continue here through these two gates. Make sure to reapply your Blessing of Sanctuary and other buffs if needed. Run on the right side. So now we target one of the last pack here and pull it with Hand of Reckoning. Apply Sacred Shield again. 
and we run this pass. Make sure to not run very close to the walls. Here we use Hand of Reckoning again, because sometimes when you hug the walls, you get teleported back. So here, this is a spot where they, a lot of times they apply hamstring here. So make sure to use your Hand of Freedom if needed. So you can just use it here if you want to prevent some slows. We can apply our Divine Plea now. I use my Tagot Marco to target the big Petra Power. And now we just use Consecration and our normal spells. So for the second pull, we don't have a ranging raw up. This is now because I record this and it takes a little bit longer time between each pull. So kill each mob and loot the second pull. The third pull is a little bit tighter on the second, uh, 60 second timer uh, before the mobs start to stun you. I normally use my sacred shield when I pull the first mob because it's 60 seconds and then I know when they start to stun me. Um, for this pull, the nitro boots are highly recommended to shorten the phase, the, the pulling phase. Um, but you can do it without and I will show it without. So we start with this pack here and sometimes the Petra Cover runs here too. So pull this here, pull the stuff on the left side and here I would use my Nitro Boots. Always pull this rare mob with your Vending shield, run down here, make sure you cleanse yourself. We pull the left ghoul pack with judgment and the right pack with our hand of reckoning. So and now auto attack the humanoids, they will not always automatically uh, trigger when you just run by them and run inside this door and here is the next kill phase. Put down Consecration, we use uh, Avenging Raw here, switch to Blessing of Might to get more damage and here I use uh, a Serenite Bomb because the time from the pulling to the kill spot is very long and here you saw the first little stun. But you see even without the Nitro Boots this pull is... Um, yeah, manageable. It's not a big problem. Kill the mobs and after the pull always switch back to Sanctuary. And this was the third pull. The fourth pull will be inside the Scarlet Bastion. So auto attack the first mobs on the right side, use Judgment on this pack, apply Sacred Shield again and the Guardsmen can knock you uh, pull the pack on the left side with Judgment, on the right side with Hand of Reckoning. You see, they will knock me in the direction I move. And sometimes you get kicked in corners. So, and to prevent this here, we use our bubble here. Pull this pack with Judgment. Otherwise, they would kick me in this corner and it would be hard to go around this corner. Pull the last pack with Hand of Reckoning. Go inside this little room here into this corner, use Consecration, Serenite Bomb is possible here, switch to Avenging Ra. For this pull, you can stay on Sanctuary if you want. Here are some mobs which mana burn you. Um, so look at your mana bar and if you go, mm, let's say under 1500 mana, just switch back to uh, Sanctuary. Uh, the humanoids will run away while you kill them, so just start looting and when they come back, finish them, switch back to Sanctuary and loot the mobs. For the fifth pull, we run back out. We have another section here where uh, the cannon master is on the end here. 
and just try to avoid the mobs while running in. Sometimes it's possible to jump between this here, so you can avoid this pack, run around, pull this pack with Hand of Reckoning, Judgment, Consecration, and now I would use my Nitro Boots to run out, but yeah, I show it without. Just run straight out here. Pull this pack in the way. Hand of Reckoning the boss. And you always have a good timer with your Sacred Shield. I have 30 seconds left to kill the mobs before they start to stun me. Now we search for Timmy the Cruel. Pull him. Uh, if he is on the left side, we kill them here. And if he's on the right side, just on the other side. So here we can use our wings again, put down Consecration and for the humanoid mobs just use your Hammer of the Righteous, Shield of the Righteous, Judgment, whatever. And you see they start to stun me, the first mobs, but on this little pulse it's not a big problem. Just spam your Consecration, um, there's always a little window where you are not stunned and um, you can down another consecration so and that's the reason i use the glyph of consecration because when the mobs stun me and i have a chance to uh, get one more consecration on the ground it has two more ticks so yeah that helps a bit so just loot those mobs and the fifth pull is done so now we are back at the entrance where we entered the dungeons um you can go out now and run to the chapel to mail some stuff or just vendor things. I like to fill up my bags completely and that's why I like to go to the undead side. The undead side can be a little bit tricky but there are a few tips and tricks to, um, to help with the equipped fiends. Um, and here are some different pulls when you are an engineer versus not an engineer. So now let me show you the six pull and let's assume I'm not an engineer. So if you are not an engineer, go to the left here and this crypt crawlers, this, this is a high priority target in here. They web you and you can't move anymore and you are silenced when they web you. So to prevent this, we kill them while we pull the mobs. Or if we are on the kill spot and we still have some crypt crawler or crypt beasts, you can move out of the web with hand of freedom, hand of protection, divine shield. These are the tools that help us in the kill phase um, to prevent the silence. So the first pull, uh, pull would be like this. We start here in the corner and just kill the crypt crawler. Move down here and kill the second one. Go here, kill the next one, kill this one. Pull this side, end of reckoning here, Avengers shield here, go to this corner and kill the mobs. Avenging Ra can be used here again. Holy Ra and yeah, that's the normal thing. So you see we pulled this uh, crypt crawler here. Just don't bother with him. If he puts you in the web, use your hand of freedom or bob whatsoever. So you see, this is the web. I can use my freedom and I'm free again. And this is the reason I took this talent to um, have four more seconds of freedom. So this was the uh, first non-engineering pull. 
now to the second non-engineering undead pull. Pull the mobs on the right side with auto attack. Run between them. Use a consecration. This crypt crawler kill it off while running. Pull that right side with hand of reckoning. Here I normally use my hand of justice. Kill the crypt crawler. Pull the left mobs. Run down here. Pull this back with avenging shield and hand of wrecking here. And I kill the mobs in this little cubby. If you have some casters on the left side, you can just juggle between these walls. Uh, to uh, get them LOSU. So loot the mobs and continue. So now the last pull, pull this pack on the left side, auto take the right side and kill the script crawler again. Pull that, hand of reckoning the mobs on the stairs, run around here. So try to pull the left peg with Hand of Reckoning. This with Judgment. Hand of Reckoning again. You don't need to pull this verse. Go in this corner here. Normally you would not have Avenging Ra here. You can just use your Divine Protection or um, wait to use your bubble if you have some um, creepies in here. So now I just use the bubble. You can even uh, heal up here when you use bubble. And continue to kill the mobs. So now let me show you the engineering pulls. They are quite a bit harder, but you um, only need to do two pulls and you save a lot of time. So first, apply your sacred shield again and pull this mobs here with your avenging shield. And then judgment, pull this mobs, hand of reckoning on the left side. Pull this mobs. Now be ready to use your freedom and nitro boot through the gates. Go to the right side. Pull this mobs. Go to the left side. And this. And go into this corner here. So now, if you get wept, wait for your first hand of freedom. Use it and continue with damage. You get feared here and stunned and what so not, but that's not a big problem. If your mana goes low, go with uh, sanctuary now we get the second web we use our bubble the mobs will run to us we continue with doing damage and try to target the crawlers and now we continue and press our second freedom to finish the mobs so this was the first big pull so for the second pull, make sure to apply Blessing of Sanctuary again and open up with Sacred Shield. Judgment here, End of Reckoning here, and now just run down on this side, this mobs here. Judgment, End of Reckoning, make sure you cleanse yourself to prevent slows. End of Reckoning on this pack. Consecration in the way here. If we get web, we use Hand of Freedom. Here, Avengers Shield. And we stop on this corner. We use our Consecration again. 
we can use our Serenite Bomb. Normally I would not recommend to use Avenging Ra, just use um, uh, your Hand of Protection to prevent the slow uh, the web. But now I had my freedom up again, so I was fine. And yeah, my gear is really, my gear is insane. So it's possible, but if you have lesser gear, just don't try it. So finish always the Crypt Crawlers first. And yeah, this was the second big pull. So we have a few mobs here. You can pull them now or just don't bother with them. Loot the stuff and go out. So, after the run, our inventory is full of stuff. We got 45 gold in War Gold Drop and a lot of things. So, if you vendor all of them, you would get another 60 to 70 gold. So, every run is uh, around 100 gold or more depends on if you have a lot of weapon drops uh, for example um, yeah so if you have four runs an hour you would get around 400 gold um, for this one you normally need a little bit more time so yeah it can be like three and a half runs um but if you min max it and you have really min max gear it's it's four runs an hour with a little bit lesser gear and um uh, and not so much experience expect three runs per hour so 300 to 400 gold just with vendoring things and now this is the weird thing so i figured out that a lot of stuff inside of Stratum is selling for very, very high prices on the auction house. We get, let's just count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, close to 18 stacks of rune claws. <clears throat> and you see one rune claws at the value of almost 24 silver so one stack is almost worth five gold on my server so check your auction house for this prices and if you sell this stuff on the auction house your gold per hour will go up immensely so just for example i did this farm yesterday a few hours and i managed to get over 1000 gold per hour I don't know if it is on every server that prices, but for my server, it's it's insane. And <clears throat> that's not the only thing. Aquamarine is selling for almost 20 gold per, um, per, per aquamarine. And you normally have one per run. So here I was lucky and I got two. Righteous Orbs selling also for around 10 gold, so another 30 gold here. And one thing, Illusion Dust, this is a material you get from disenchanting level 53 to 60 green items, is selling for 5 gold per Illusion Dust on my server. So when I send the green items to my alt and he disenchants them, I get, and it's crazy, I get one to two stacks of illusion dust per run and one stack is worth 100 gold. So I got 45 gold, raw gold in this run and the stuff I have in here, when I mail it to a bank alt and put it on the auction house, I get way, way over 350 gold per run. It's insane. I don't know if it stays like this and I can just imagine why the prices are so high right now. But if it stays like this, Stratholm is, I think, the most insane gold farm for, for Paladins in, in War of the Lich King. And it's super easy. It's a level 60 uh, dungeon. We we don't even need figurine of the Colossus anymore or 
have to care about our defensive stats. I just have... I only have like offensive stuff. I have strength gear, tier 6, uh, war of scenarios, two offensive trinkets. So here's nothing defensive, just pure DPS. So it's super easy. So yeah, check the prices on your server. And if you see that Rune Claws goes for uh, a good price, Aquamarine, uh, Righteous Orbs, or Illusion does, and even you get some uh, some BOE blue items here. If you disenchant them, look for large brilliant shard prizes. They are, I guess, between 5 to 15 gold, depends on the server. Yeah, try it out. Check the prices on your server and yeah, have fun making gold. I hope you like this little guide. Um, if you have any questions, just put it down uh, in the comments. Um, or catch me when I stream live on Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv uh, slash schneezen. And yeah. Have fun farming, boys. <laughs> <laughs>